Welcome back to Forest News. In our last two episodes, we spoke about the intense fire behavior of the Caldor fire and the fuel treatment areas that helped to reduce that intensity. In this episode, we're gonna check in with the forest supervisors from the El Dorado National Forest and the Lake Tahoe Basin Management Unit, where the Caldor fire is still an active incident. Between these two individuals, there's decades of experience of fighting fire, planning and implementing fuel treatment projects, and managing large, complex incidents like the Caldor fire. Let's check in with these two experts to see what they have to say about fuel treatment areas. Jeff, I want you to put us in that room. The Caldor fire, it's burning hot. It's moving towards Pollock Pines. You're there with professional firefighters, a planning staff. There's maps on the table. What are, what are, what are you and your staff looking for? Yeah, so the operations section chiefs and the branch chiefs, they just kept remarking there were fuels treatments for them to work with and try to get in and start fighting the fire. So Gwen, from your personal experience as a wildland firefighter, what do fuel treatment areas mean to you? Opportunity, it's pretty simple. It changes the environment so that our firefighters can get in, do it safely, and be much more effective in their fire suppression efforts. Sometimes it may seem there's a perception that because we're a federal agency, we're not part of these communities. Tell me though, you on the Caldor Fire here, what do field treatments mean to you and your staff? Yeah, so I had at least 50 of our own employees evacuated as a part of the Caldor Fire, including myself. And so our fuels treatments are not just protecting your community, it's protecting our community. Our fuel treatment areas alone the answer to high intensity wildfire. Yeah, so fuels treatments don't stop wildfires, but they do a couple things for us. They change the environment enough that we're able to engage that fire, and two, we're able to engage it safely. Our firefighters have a safe way to get in to actually take suppression efforts on that front. It sounds like fuel treatments had some positive effect on fire behavior here in the Caldor Fire. What is it gonna to take to increase the amount of fuel treatments? Well, so the Caldor Fire is one of the only fires in history that have crossed this Sierra Nevada crest, so obviously our work is cut out. But partnerships and resources and a sustained commitment, that's what it's gonna take. Why do you think the Lake Tahoe Basin Management Unit has been so successful in planning and implementing fuel treatments? It's easy, partnerships. We have worked over decades in these communities with our partners hand in hand to create these fuels treatments, not only on US Forest Service lands, but across all our partnership lands as well. It's all about relationships and the partners here are second to none. Do you think the fuel treatment areas in South Lake Tahoe can serve as a model or an example? This is the gold standard of fuels treatments and should be modeled across the entire country. What we've been able to accomplish here with our partnerships is second to none. We've been working over decades to accomplish the treatments in and around South Lake Tahoe and it showed off, it paid off during the Caldor Fire.